This pharaoh's painted tomb was missing its mummy. Seti I had been buried in one of Egypt's most colorful royal tombs, but his body was gone by the time its richly decorated halls were uncovered in 1817. Nestled among the entranceways to the tombs of the Valley of the Kings is a structure known to scholars as KV-17. Despite its unpoetic designation, this tomb makes the hearts of Egyptologists beat faster. Built for Seti I, who died in 1279 BC, it was discovered in 1817, surprising excavators with its richly decorated walls depicting religious beliefs through images of the dead pharaoh and the deities of ancient Egypt. In the Valley of the Kings, the most famous tomb, that of King Tutankhamun, can be found between Seti I, Center, and his son, Ramses II the Great, Upper Left. The Valley of the Kings was the burial site of many rulers of Egypt's New Kingdom, circa 1539 to 1075 BC, when Egypt rose to new heights of power and influence. Building this great desert necropolis began during the reign of Thutmose the One Street, the third king of the 18th dynasty, whose rule marked the resurgence of Egypt following a long period of instability. A grand tomb was prepared for Thutmose, cut into the rock of the rugged desert valleys on the Nile's west bank. The remote spot was chosen to hide lavish royal burials from tomb raiders. Other New Kingdom rulers placed their tombs there, and the necropolis grew. Despite attempts to hide their contents by using concealed passages, most tombs, with the notable exception of the tomb of Tutankhamun, were extensively looted, including Seti I. However, without golden grave goods or even the pharaoh's mummy, Seti's tomb still had myriad treasures. The priceless art that adorns the walls remained intact to give modern scholars a vivid look into the intricate art that revealed Egyptian spirituality and funerary rituals surrounding the death of a king. In the 1st century BC, the historian Diodorus Siculus described the Valley of the Kings as a ruin. The centuries were not kind to the site as both natural and human causes had further degraded the site. In the early 1800s, many objects across Egypt were pillaged for the European market. When Italian adventurer and former circus strongman Giovanni Belzoni arrived in Egypt in 1815, the country was under British control. Belzoni's status, a combination of explorer and tomb robber, did not deter the British consul, Henry Salt, from using his services to help transport a massive head of Ramses II to Alexandria from where it was shipped to the British Museum in London. Belzoni also became embroiled in a dirt war with the French consul, who employed gangs of tomb raiders to track down antiquities. Enter your text here The translucent alabaster coffin, discovered by Giovanni Belzoni, was removed from the tomb and taken to London in the early 1820s. The sarcophagus features carved hieroglyphics from the Book of Gates. As part of his campaign to best a French rival, Belzoni befriended local people near the Valley of the Kings who worked as tomb robbers. Thanks to their information, he became familiar with the site. Despite his mercenary streak, Belzoni was genuinely interested in archaeology. He studied the valley's topography and noted how fast draining rainwater could indicate hidden openings. Enter your text here. In October of the following year, his men discovered the tomb of Ramses I founder of the 19th dynasty. In the course of that discovery, Belzoni noticed another small hollow that easily absorbed rainwater, suggesting that a cavity lay beneath. On digging, his team found a rubble-filled entrance. Once the debris was cleared, they could glimpse magnificent wall decorations beyond. While exploring the tomb, Belzoni found an embalmable leading him to believe the tomb was dedicated to Apis, the holy bull worshipped in northern Egypt. He did not identify the tomb as that of Seti I, or of any ruler, because nowhere in the tomb was there a human mummy. The vaulted ceiling of Seti I's lower burial chamber represents the firmament and the stars within it. Different constellations from the night sky, including Ursa Major, which is a bull in ancient Egyptian cosmology appear, positioned between processions of the gods. Despite his ignorance as to the identity of the tomb's original occupant, Belzoni recognized that the paintings adorning the interior were exceptional. 
In the months following the discovery, Belzoni took wax impressions of them, which damaged the reliefs. He also painted watercolors of the two Mart. When Belzoni reached the burial chamber whose magnificent painted ceiling represents the heavens, he found an empty alabaster sarcophagus. The coffin was found laying across a staircase that led down to a long and mysterious corridor, which Belzoni's men gave up exploring after a hundred yards. The sarcophagus was removed from the tomb and eventually acquired by the English collector Sir John Soane. Seti first meets with various divinities in this antechamber. The pharaoh is accompanied by the goddess Isis, and Anubis, the god of death and mummification, is represented with the head of a dog. Not only were the tomb's artworks breathtaking to see, but they also provided today's Egyptologists with the earliest, most complete set of funerary texts from ancient Egypt. Wall paintings depict detailed scenes from the Book of Amdwad and texts from the Litany of Re, a collection of invocations and prayers to the solar deity. The giant sarcophagus is decorated with scenes from the Book of Gates, an Egyptian text that recounts the passage of a soul through the underworld and is today regarded as one of the most important artifacts from Egypt's 19th dynasty. For years after the discovery, the tomb would be identified by various rulers. But in 1828 French scholar Jean-Francois Champollion deciphered hieroglyphics in the tomb to identify it as that of Seti I. One of the 19th dynasty's greatest rulers and the father of Ramses II, Seti I ruled for 11 years during which he expanded Egypt's influence south to Nubia and northeast to Syria. Archaeologists would later find the king's mummy in the royal mummy cache nearby, where it had been moved in antiquity for safekeeping. The mummy of Seti I was removed from the tomb in antiquity and hidden nearby for safekeeping. It was discovered in 1881. In 1903 Howard Carter, future discoverer of Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, re-excavated Seti I's tomb using meticulous care and scholarly methods to record the tomb's contents. More than a century later, Egyptologist Sahi Hawass finally excavated the tunnel that Belzoni had found leading downward from the sepulchral chamber. He discovered that it ends abruptly after 570 feet, and concluded it may have been intended to link the burial chamber with the realm of the dead. Since Belzoni's first excavation, exposure to the elements and human visitors have damaged Seti's tomb, but conservation efforts strive to protect and preserve it. In 2016 the Fakhtum Foundation used the latest technology to scan and photograph the entire complex not only to preserve and study its artworks but also to create high-precision facsimiles that can be printed to erect full-size models of the tomb in full color. The excavation of the tomb is largely complete, but its aura of enigma will linger, it seems, for centuries to come. At 290 feet from the entrance hall to the burial chamber, and a further 570 feet in the form of the tunnel at the end, Seti, S2, known as KB-17, is the longest in the Valley of the Kings. It accommodates ritual features, such as the good chamber, and scenes from Egyptian funerary texts. One of these, from the Book of Gates, depicts the journey of a soul through the underworld. The First Steps The entrance to Seti's tomb leads to a series of preliminary corridors and chambers. The walls in these opening chambers are covered with myriad artworks, in the form of colored reliefs, depicting funerary texts focusing on the sun god Re. One of these is the New Kingdom Book of Amdwan, showing the journey taken each night by Re. Over the course of 12 hours, he must overcome obstacles using the magical texts shown on the walls. The walls also feature texts from the Litany of Re, a collection of invocations and prayers to the solar deity. Visitors descend a set of stairs and then proceed through three corridors. In the first room, Seti I can be seen greeting the god Re Harakti in a scene from the Litany of Re, which associates the deceased pharaoh with the various forms of the sun god. A succession of vultures representing the goddess Nekbet appears on the ceiling against a starry background. Images from the Litany also appear in the second stairway and depict Re in different forms. The next corridor depicts different stages of Re's nightly journey on the left and right walls, as recounted in the Book of Amdwat. A visitor's journey then pauses at the Good Chamber, which symbolizes the burial of Osiris, god of the underworld. 
artworks here show gods welcoming the deceased pharaoh. Pillars of the Gods After the well of Osiris, visitors pass into a room supported by four richly adorned pillars. Whereas the preliminary corridors and chambers centered on the role of the solar god Re, this space marks a shift in tone to a type of art that historians term phonic, related to the underworld. The artwork in this room depicts scenes from the Book of Gates, a funerary text that recounts the deceased's journey through the underworld, in which each hour of the night is marked by a heavily guarded gate. Although the Book of Gates may predate the New Kingdom, its first usage in a royal tomb is found in the funerary chamber of Horemheb, the last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. The second annex features several gods holding a cow, an animal form of nut, goddess of the sky. On each side of these columns, the soul of the deceased Seti first consults with a divinity. On the rear wall of the chamber, Seti is welcomed by Osiris, god of the underworld. A door leads to a two-pillared side chamber whose walls are covered with unfinished decorations that were sketched out in great detail, but the color had not been added when Seti first was entombed. Stairs proceed down to the lower levels of the tomb to continue the journey toward the burial chamber. closer to the afterlife. Descending the stairs from the pillared chamber, visitors reach another corridor with walls that show Seti first standing in front of an offering table. Artworks on the left wall show a set of texts and images connected with the opening of the mouth ritual, a ceremony in which a series of ceremonial tools are applied to a likeness of the deceased to enable them to regain the faculties of a living, speaking, and eating being in the afterlife. The ceremony has its roots in the Old Kingdom, but its depiction in tomb art is rare. Only one other royal New Kingdom tomb, that of 19th dynasty Queen Tazrit, has extensive depictions of it. The upper burial chamber opens onto the spectacle of Seti's lower burial chamber. The arching ceiling's beautiful blue background, evoking the vault of the skies, is adorned with deities and constellations. Before entering a room painted with more depictions of the opening of the mouth and excerpts from the Litany of the Eye of Horus, a hallway begins with steps and wall paintings of protective winged serpents. The departed could participate in a sequence of offerings to the god in this funerary inscription. The next room is an antechamber with stunning ceiling paintings of the night sky. Belzoni, who used wax molds to make exact replicas of the colorful reliefs, severely destroyed the polychrome wall paintings. The interment chambers, the beauty of the burial complex itself, which would have contained the pharaoh's mummy, follows the antechamber. The area is divided into two pieces, as it was in Amenhotep II's tomb a century before, an upper chamber supported by six richly ornamented pillars, and a lower chamber with a high, vaulted ceiling painted with beautiful images of Egyptian deities. The spiral structure, which stands 20 feet tall, represents the celestial vault, with a sequence of gods and goddesses leading up to constellation symbols painted in the form of animals. Scenes from the Book of Amdwat are painted on the walls. The goddess Isis spreads her wings from the highest point on the back wall, presiding. Serpents slither in a scene from the Book of Amdwat, funerary literature painted on the walls of Seti I's tomb's preparatory hallway. Belzoni discovered Seti's empty alabaster sarcophagus here, beneath this lovely vaulted ceiling. Some speculate that it was abandoned by ancient looters because its size made it practically hard to transport. The vast, unfinished tunnel that runs below has baffled researchers for nearly two centuries, Egyptologist Sahi Hawass excavated it in the toothed storage facilities for the deceased two modest side annexes flank the upper burial room. When Howard Carter unearthed Tutankhamun's completely intact tomb in 1922, he discovered annexes that acted as afterlife storage. There was pottery, games, and even food in them. Similar artifacts may have been plundered long ago from Seti's tomb's annex contents. The first storehouse is covered with scenes from the Book of Gates, while a twin annex just across the street is decorated with scenes from the Book of the Heavenly Cow, which tells the story of how the goddess Nut ascended to construct the celestial vault. According to legend, when her height caused her to The two supporting pillars of a square room are covered with figures from the Book of Amdwat, including the deceased king, who is linked to the god Osiris. Belzoni discovered the mummified bull as well as countless Ushabtis, wooden and faience figures that would serve the departed in the afterlife. 
underground passageway for nearly two centuries, no one knew where a secret lengthy staircase leading downhill from Seti First's funeral apartments headed. Belzoni followed it for a short distance before turning back in 1817. The tunnel's bottom sections were filled with rubble, sparking speculation that it might conceal the pharaoh's true resting place. An amateur local archaeologist cleared another 100 feet in 1960, but then took a wrong path and lost sight of the original passageway. Finally, in 2007, an Egyptian antiquities team led by Zahi Hawass began a three-year process of meticulous rebel removal. They discovered the 570-foot-long tunnel abruptly ended with no more chambers in 2010. The passage may have been intended to connect the burial chamber with the underworld, according to Hawass, but it was left unfinished when Seti first died.